Hi, welcome to another episode of Gardening with Peg. I'm here with Sylvia Smith, and um, she works at Valley Nursery and creates these incredible container pots, among all the other wonderful things she does. And so today she's going to show you how to create a perennial planting in a container that will last probably anywhere from five to ten years, depending on the plants. We want to thank Valley Nursery for hosting us today. They're located in Paulsbo off of Bond Road. And um, I live in the North End, so that's why I chose this nursery. But if you live in another part of the area, that's fine. But thank you, Valley, for hosting us today. When you're putting together a um, container, you need to consider the containers you're planting in. Um, these would be perfect examples for seasonal containers. They're lightweight, um, they have good drainage, fun colors. You can put your summer annuals or your fall annuals in here. A lot of pots will come with these um, trays built in and if you push a button in the bottom they'll pop out for you and I want to be sure to show you this because um, standing water can develop in the bottom of the tray and um, ruin your beautiful container if you don't um, empty it out every now and then you don't want your plants to be in standing water so and then you can just pop it back in and there you go Today I'm going to put together a um, perennial container. So we're going to put together some plants that will be hardy over the winter and for several years in the pot. We need to consider the size of the pot and the plants, where we're going to locate the pot if it's for sun or shade, um, the soil medium that we've used inside the pot, so you want to be sure to choose a container that is able to withstand the weather in the Northwest. Um, these are high-fired Vietnamese pots. It's a real thick clay and they're fired at such a high temperature that they are frost-proof. I mean, there's, it, it's really going to be hard-pressed to do any damage from the weather to this. It's got good drainage on the bottom. I'm not going to tip it over, but there's a nice big hole down there. You want to make sure it drains. No standing water on the bottom. You do not need to add any gravel or other materials to the bottom of your container, especially for a perennial container. So if you're concerned about the soil spilling out of the pot before the roots have established in the container, you can just put a piece of coffee filter over the hole and that'll keep the soil from spilling out. We've decided to use a container that will be evergreen over the winter since it's a perennial container. So because it is a perennial container, we need a soil that's going to last um, for years. I, I think you could probably put this container together and have it stay together for between five and seven years without having to take your tree out and root prune it. Um, so I'm using a bark-based soil today. That's what this is. Um, it's predominantly bark and not so much peat, and you can smell a little bit of manure in there. It smells really good. So I'm going to add a little bit more soil in here. I don't want my soil right up to the top of the pot. I want to have a little well, especially for... Um, your perennial plants in order to get a good drink in there for them so that you know that the water will go the entire way to the bottom of the container. What I discovered is when I looked in the pot it's pretty dry so before I, before I plant this plant or any plant in a container I'm going to water it first. There we go. I never want to plant my tree any tree 
lower than the soil level. So make sure you don't dig it in too deep. You don't want a lot of soil going over the crown of your tree for the healthiest part of your tree. We're gonna plant this beautiful tree and now we're gonna add some plants to keep it company. We're gonna make this container pretty from all sides. Anywhere you look, it's gonna look lovely. So I picked out this um, Northern Lights hair grass. Has a little pink tinge to it and yet it's really pretty, has a lot of yellow contrast underneath. So just working it out of the pot, it's not overly rooted, it's not heavily rooted. I am gonna open this up a little bit on the bottom. Well, using your fingers and your hands or an old garden knife that you might use at home, you could loosen up the roots that are on the bottom and give it just a little tug around the side so that it can grow, the roots will grow out sooner. Just loosening up the roots and taking off a little bit of the outer edge. And that's called root pruning so that I can fit my plant into my container and it will still have room to grow. I um, am a firm believer in fertilizing with an organic fertilizer and in, in my home garden that's what I do. I fertilize. I have a regular fertilizing um, schedule that I follow. This is the wire vine, the big leaf wire vine, Mullenbeckia. I'm gonna give this guy a little drink, he feels a little dry. Um, again, I'm gonna give it a little tug on the bottom to loosen up its roots. This thing's gonna take off like crazy. It's just many, many pieces of Mullenbeckia ready to go. It's gonna be big and beautiful. Using the wire vine in this pot, the only thing I would be concerned with is it growing into the tree. So I'd just, root, I'd just prune it as I go. And every now and then, perhaps when I'm out watering or fertilizing, I'd check, make sure it wasn't going up in the tree. It can't hurt the tree, but it will um, cha definitely change the look of your container. Now we have a little heather called Firefly. It's got a beautiful chartreuse foliage. Um, it gets quite a bit of red to it when it's in the sun. His, his root system's not very compact, so we're not gonna, um, we're not gonna take it apart. We're just gonna put him in there. Here's a little gray Hebe called Red Edge. It will develop more red on the edges of the foliage as time goes on. This is what I've been told, one of the hardiest Hebe's in the Northwest. So if you ever have any issues with Hebe's in your garden, you might want to try this variety. This is a five inch pot rather than a four inch pot. And um, you get quite a bit more roots. So your plants establish um, faster in the garden or in a container. Working the soil in around the roots. You don't want to leave any air pockets in there. You want it in nice and firm. I'm gonna turn this around a little bit so you can see what's happening with the foliage. All our interest here is, <clears throat> excuse me, with the foliage. Um, we have a trailer, we have something upright and poofy. Um, we got this bright chartreuse. The foliage is gonna give us the color for this pot rather than um, flowers. Even though some of these guys will flower later in the season, the foliage is gonna carry you through all winter. Here's a lovely heuchera called Blackout. Nice dark fo foliage for your container. It's gonna pick up the browns in the lip of the pot and the contrast of the grays and the red is just, it's remarkable. It's real pretty. Now this is his flower spike coming up now. The Huger is all flower. Their common name is coral bells. 
Um, so they, they have a uh, long stem with little flowers on it. I personally don't care for the flowers and I just prune those off so I don't have to seed them. The old fashioned coral bells with the red flowers, I love those. But these guys, you don't, you don't need them. One more little plant to fit in there. And this is the cushion bush. I'm trying to pronounce its real name. Kalosophallus? Phallus? We don't really know. Brownie eye. It's a heavily branched chalk white woolly shrub. It's dramatic and unusual. It has yellow button flowers. That is really fun. And it just pops out against the dark foliage and the pink of the grass. So this is, this looks pretty packed already, but <clears throat> this is gonna grow to be a, a large perennial container. Your care on, on these guys um, is, you're, you're gonna have to water it in once you get it situated where you want it. If you watered it right now, it'd be too heavy to move. So get it where you want it and water it. Um, you wanna know that the water's going all the way down. So if you see some seepage out the bottom, you're doing it right. You do not want your containers sitting on the ground um, in the mud. It'll make your pot dirty and it can wick water in and <clears throat> roots from trees and shrubs, tall top growing roots from trees and shrubs can get into the drainage hole and plug it. So you, you want it to either be on little feet or on some gravel or something. So not on the, on the muddy ground and water it in good. The perennial containers, you do not need to water every week like you would with an annual. But you definitely want to hit it maybe three times during the growing season with an all-purpose fertilizer. Just so everybody gets some good eats. The soil that I use, the bark-based soil, comes with a lot of nutrients in it. So this guy is ready to go as is. There's a little room, you could put a rock or something in there if you wanted. So now that we've got it all planted, we're gonna take the stake out. That's simple enough to do. Just get your clippers and go along your plastic and remove that. So that's the back and it's as pretty as the front <laughs> or what I thought was the front. <laughs> it's a neat, it's a neat container. So um, one more fun pitch for Valley. If you have Valley Bucks, you better come and use them and purchase this pot in August. But um, it may not be here because I want to take it home. <laughs> Thank you, Sylvia. <laughs> Thank you, Valley. Um, we did put a little support back for the tree. It's, it's a youngster, so sometimes trees need a little bit of support, but not constricted with little pieces of plastic wrapped around their trunk. <laughs>